So here I was making a video about the farthest galaxy ever discovered, the galaxy you see right here, when just a few hours ago from when I'm making this video, scientists release a new study. Looks like this is no longer a record holder. James Webb just beat its own record and discovered something that's even farther away and something that's even more mysterious. And by the way, this galaxy was also already quite mysterious because extremely recently scientists discovered oxygen in it. You can learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description. But now we have this. Mom Z14. A now confirmed new record holder that seems to be just a little bit farther away, but far enough to create new issues, new problems, and new exciting discoveries. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new record, discuss what it means for science, and talk about why this galaxy is apparently a little bit strange. And you can discover more about this in the study you see right here. A cosmic miracle. A remarkably luminous galaxy at redshift of 14.44, confirmed with the JWST. And I guess first, let's briefly discuss how this was discovered, because this is kind of important. And it was actually found here. The Cosmic Evolution Survey, also known as the Cosmic Survey, or the largest deep survey of the entire universe to date. This is actually made out of approximately 600 different Hubble images, all stitched together and all requiring approximately 1000 hours of observations in the last few decades. But it only represents a tiny, tiny part of the entire night skies. As a matter of fact, we would require approximately 20,000 of these in order to cover the entire night skies. But over time, in this survey, researchers discovered a huge number of very distant galaxies, most of them as candidates, but some of them have already been confirmed. And one of these candidates was the galaxy we're discussing today. A galaxy initially picked up by Hubble, but a galaxy that was not confirmed until now. And that's because Hubble, as you know, does have its limitations. As a matter of fact, when it comes to the records from Hubble, we discussed it back in 2022. This was the famous GN Z11 galaxy that was a record holder for just a few months. And that's until James Webb became operational and started to discover so many more. And since then, this galaxy dramatically dropped in its ranking. And you can kind of see how it compares to some of the other galaxies in this image. So basically, in just the last three years, because of James Webb, scientists were able to officially confirm several galaxies that were even farther away, and several galaxies that were even more exciting. Now, GNZ11 is still kind of mysterious, and we actually discussed some of the recent discoveries in one of the videos in the description, but a lot of these new discoveries seem to be even better. And while this galaxy, GHGS Z14, lasted as number one for just a few months as well. And in this case, based on its redshift, we know that this galaxy existed approximately 290 million years following the Big Bang. With the other galaxy discussed in the same study, the one you see right here on the bottom, being slightly closer and existing approximately 10 million years afterwards. So basically here, this was approximately 300 million years following the Big Bang. And so because so many of these galaxies were now confirmed, this kind of created a bit of an issue for modern cosmological ideas, especially when it comes to galactic formation. And though some scientists suggested that maybe our cosmology is incorrect, much more recent analysis suggested that it was actually the problem with simulations. As in, maybe we just didn't really push simulations far enough and ignored the idea behind tiny overdensities in the extremely early universe. Because in some of the most recent studies, when these overdensities were considered, they suddenly started to create these early galaxies as well. So basically this was a problem with models, but not a problem that broke cosmology in any way. But there was one assumption that could have been incorrect. This is basically in regards to star formation. In most of these models, the assumption was that galaxies usually produce stars at a kind of a constant and somewhat unchanging rate, potentially increasing over time. But what we seem to observe is very different. Most galaxies seem to actually go through a kind of a burst, with rates of formation becoming really high temporarily, which causes many of these galaxies to become extremely bright, which would actually explain why we're seeing so many. But this doesn't last long, and the star formation eventually settles, just to potentially be restarted again, maybe following some kind of a collision or some kind of a other powerful event. And in some cases, some of these emissions are also enhanced by supermassive black holes, which is also why we seem to observe so many different objects, including these mysterious little red dots. Once again, you can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. Over 300 have already been confirmed, and they're also kind of mysterious and are still poorly understood. But the fact that they exist means that 
Something is definitely going on in the early universe that we still seem to have trouble explaining. Especially because many of these objects are just way way too luminous and too bright compared to what's expected. Which is kind of what's happening this time again. We have this new discovery at a record redshift away from planet Earth, and it seems to contain certain parameters that don't make sense. And so let's discuss the discovery. Initially, it was detected because of this. As you can see here, it seems to be completely invisible in certain filters and only becomes visible in higher wavelengths. And that's because, like so many other distant galaxies, its light is blocked by neutral hydrogen. It's basically so far away that it's hidden from us by all of this gas that prevents some of the higher energy from getting through. And specifically, any wavelengths shorter than approximately 121 nanometers representing the Lyman alpha emissions, the emissions of hydrogen. And though normally this would be ultraviolet light because of the expansion of the universe, by the time it gets to us, it becomes infrared light. But in this case, it doesn't really tell us the exact distance yet. It just gives us a rough estimate. And in order to discover the exact distance, researchers rely on additional observations, and specifically spectroscopic observations, from various elements we expect might exist here. And that's actually the lines you see in this image. Here we had nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and of course hydrogen and helium. And so by seeing these specific wavelengths, and by seeing how much they were redshifted, we can then determine the exact distance. And this tells us quite a lot. First of all, it tells us this galaxy is 33.8 billion light years away from us. Basically when the universe was only 282 million years old, or at a redshift of 14.44. But second of all, because we're seeing nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen, it tells us that there is a lot of star formation going on already. And of course, supernova. Or basically that for at least 10 million years, this galaxy has been creating new stars that were going supernova, producing huge amounts of ionization, with a lot of these ionized nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen atoms now visible in these emissions. And on top of this, we can also determine its overall size and mass. It seems to be about 500 light years across, so pretty small, obviously not a large galaxy, and also very compact. As a matter of fact, it seems to be extremely compact. Here the mass is approximately 100 million solar masses in a relatively small volume of space. This is actually discovered because the light in this case seems to be extremely concentrated and not very diffuse. But something else was discovered that seems to be kind of unusual. First of all, this galaxy seems to be more or less dust-free. In other words, because of various emissions and because of potential supernova, it seems to have dramatically cleared itself of most of the interstellar gas. And second of all, there doesn't seem to be any indication for any black hole emissions. And that's actually kind of strange. In this case, in most of these galaxies, a typical supermassive black hole is going to inject a huge amount of energy into the accretion disk, thus increasing the overall brightness, making this object much, much brighter. But it would also make the ultraviolet light coming from this galaxy a lot less steep. And that's not what's seen from this galaxy, suggesting that the black hole is either very quiet or potentially non-existent. And thus presenting us with a new unusual case for a very compact and somewhat massive object that's once again somewhat difficult to explain and whose nature is currently unknown. As a matter of fact, because of the lack of black hole activity, it definitely confirms that all of this light seems to come from a lot of massive starburst activities. Or basically here, all of the stars started to suddenly be created, possibly within just the last 10 million years. And it was extremely high in the last 3 million years, kind of similar to what we usually observe in various molecular clouds, but obviously on a much larger, more massive scale. On top of this, this galaxy also seems to be very, very ionizing, or basically produces a lot of high energy light, which is seen as the emissions of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon that's usually not as easily visible from other galaxies. And even though there is not a lot of dust in this galaxy, it seems to have a huge amount of gas, basically hydrogen and helium, possibly 20 times as high as in other galaxies at this distance, implying that this object is extremely dense and very, very compact. And right now, this is maybe one mystery that's kind of difficult to explain. It's unclear why this galaxy is emitting so much energy, and why so much of it seems to be extremely ionized emissions of nitrogen that we usually don't see from other galaxies. Likewise, it seems to be a little bit too massive and a little bit too compact. As a matter of fact, its overall mass is comparable to the small Magellanic Cloud, but its size is much, much smaller, only 500 light years across. And for all we know, Maybe this is actually a progenitor of some kind of a massive globular cluster. 
which are usually very compact, contain lots and lots of stars, and generally no central black hole. But that's just one of the potential assumptions. Because the only thing we know for a fact is that this is definitely compact, very very bright, seems to be forming lots of different stars, and there seems to be no black hole activity. And so maybe this is just what early galaxies were like. And this galaxy will just transform into something else as the universe evolves for billions of years. But there is actually something else that's mentioned in the study that also forms a new mystery. So far we seem to have two distinct populations of these very distant galaxies. Some of them seem to be large, extended, and produce somewhat weak ionizing radiation, but some of them seem to be very compact, very small, very massive, and produce large amounts of ionizing radiation visible as these powerful nitrogen emissions, with both types of galaxies discovered in a lot of these surveys. And it's this MOMZ14 galaxy that seems to be the most extreme. And so here we have certain unanswered questions, and certain questions that need to be tackled in some of the future studies. Because for all we know, maybe the star formation in the first billion years was actually kind of different, and possibly the result of something exotic that we still don't understand. For example, some studies suggested that maybe this was the result of the same effects that produced the Hubble tension, or basically the evolving dark energy, or maybe something entirely different, which I'm sure we'll discuss in some of the future videos. And I'm sure we'll talk about this galaxy again very soon as well, except that I forgot to mention one thing. What exactly is MOM? Well, here this stands for Mirage or Miracle. This was the name of the initial survey that was designed to try to discover various luminous galaxies and find out if they're actually really far away or were just producing some kind of an unusual effect, making them appear too bright. And it just so happens that in this case, this is indeed some kind of a miracle, or I guess a scientific miracle in a sense that it's kind of difficult to explain. It seems to be just a little bit too bright. But once we discover something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon, where you can actually find quite a lot of additional footage and never before seen videos, or by joining a channel membership, where you can find even more videos and some other hidden footage. Or maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.